wonderful to have you here and welcome to our first episode of our new True Health series. Today, we're gonna to be talking about food, specifically what to eat in order to improve your health, to recover from chronic diseases or any illnesses, to achieve your optimum healthy body weight, to increase your mental, emotional, physical well-being. See, Zuzana and I see nutrition as a catalyst to big change, not only in our own health and well-being, but in the well-being of the planet as well. You know, each day, we actually multiple times a day have a choice. And that choice is either to feed disease or to encourage health and well-being. And the food that we eat directly not only impacts our own health, but it impacts the well-being of the planet. For 20 plus years now, we've been promoting a plant-based diet. There are numerous reasons why eating lower on the food chain, meaning a diet rich in fruits, vegetables, herbs, nuts, seeds, legumes, whole grains, it makes so much sense in our world today. Environmentally speaking, plants require less water and less carbon to produce than it does for meat. To give you an example, six ounces of beef requires 674 gallons of water. Just take a moment to digest that. Whereas beans requires less than half of that water for production. Now, there's a 2010 study, and according to it, it's basically saying that livestock is changing landscape. And what we mean by this is the livestock sector really is responsible for 18% of greenhouse gas emissions around the world. And most of this is caused by the methane from cows. In addition to the environmental benefits, eating lower on the food chain is better for our own health. Not only are we eating the animal, but we're also eating what the animal ate. And most animals nowadays are given a grain fed diet and it's really not part of their natural diet. So these animals are likely more inflamed and not to mention they have probably consumed pesticides, hormones, other toxins within their lifetime. So we're consuming all of that as well. And these are just a few reasons really of why we should consider adopting a plant-based diet. I think most of the time it's easy for people to look at themselves and their own health and as well as the planet because I mean after all we are all here we want to enjoy a beautiful life so it's really up to us to make these changes so what does it mean to eat a whole food plant-based diet think of this approach as being nutrient rich as being abundant it is not about labeling yourself vegan or vegetarian it's really about fueling yourself as well as your family with nutrient rich foods. And these foods not only provide all the essential nutrients that we need for day to day living, but it also allows our body the ability to heal. And it's been proven over and over again that when we adopt a plant based diet, we are able to prevent and maybe even reverse any chronic health conditions or any diseases. Eat real food. It is really that simple. But what do I mean by real food? I think deep down in our hearts, we all have an understanding of what real food is. When we take, for instance, a hot dog or a glazed donut from a convenience store, we know that that's not real food. And we look at the flour that's used to produce that hot dog bun or that glazed donut, it has likely been bleached, stripped from all of its minerals, its nutrients, and maybe even grown with glyphosates. So what exactly is this gonna do for our body? We need to start to look at food this way because sadly, about 60 to 70% of North Americans are eating this way. There's chemically produced products ending up on the plates of these people. And I believe that this is really why we are seeing a health crisis today. So eat real food, and I guarantee that you will start to see the improvement in your overall health, your mood, and not just for yourself, if you start to feed your family these foods as well, you'll see the results in them. Next would be variety. As simple as that, eating a vast amount of fruits, vegetables, plant-based proteins. When I said abundance earlier, really a plant-based diet is abundant. There's so many choices and options. We can't just think of a you know, silly salad that has nothing on it. There's so many options and we have to start to incorporate all of those if we really wanna make this lifestyle sustainable and if we wanna thrive from it. Limit your animal protein. Now, this is probably one of the more challenging ones 
And if you are just transitioning, then what we encourage is that you are not consuming eggs or fish no more than two to three times a week. And if you can, eliminate any poultry, pork, or beef. Unfortunately, these put a big, huge hinder on our immune system and further contribute to poor health. Avoid processed sugars. High fructose corn syrup and other processed sugars are not real food. And they put a huge burden on your liver, causing weight gain, inflammation, and autoimmune disease. Time your meals appropriately. In order for your body to function properly, it needs time to digest and heal. So for instance, if you ate your first meal at 7 a.m., then consider taking your last meal at 7 p.m. This gives you a nice window to allow this healing, this digestion to happen. You can always look into increasing that fasting window to 16 to 18 hours even, just depending on how your body and how you personally react to something like this. Now let's look at how this could look like in real life. We've designed something called the plant-based plate. It's a simple diagram that is really a good reference to consider if this is the type of lifestyle you want to adopt. This helps ensure you getting all of the proper nutrients. It ensures that variety and that balance. So let's take a closer look. As you'll see on the top here, we have vegetables and pretty much half the plate is covered in vegetables. We encourage some raw veggies as well as cooked vegetables. This can be anything from collards to kale, spinach, mustard greens, bok choy, Swiss chard, cucumber, celery, broccoli, zucchini, sweet potatoes, eggplant, tomatoes, summer, winter squash, asparagus, garlic, beets, onion, bell peppers, green beans, as well as wild fermented vegetables such as sauerkraut and kimchi. And we encourage you aim for seven or more servings a day. But as you can see, again, it's all about that variety. Moving on to nuts, seeds, and healthy fats. Things like almonds, macadamia nuts, Brazil nuts, pumpkin and sunflower seeds, pecans, walnuts, hemp and chia seeds, coconut, avocado, olives. And we have enlisted cashews and peanuts, and there's a reason why. We encourage you to limit, almost have these as a treat, if you will, that they're actually not a nut, so they have fewer nutrients, and they're more prone to carry neurotoxins on them. And we'll look at legumes and sprouts next. A variety of different beans from kidney, pinto, black, navy beans, fava, adzuki, lima, things like yellow peas, split peas, lentils, chickpeas, even in the form of hummus is always a nice variety and option there. Tempeh, we encourage non-GMO for this as well. Alpha alpha, mung beans, and really looking at all these varieties of different beans and legumes, sprouts, they provide a meat-like texture. So they're great for curries, burgers, chilies. Next, we'll look at whole grains. We say about two to three servings a day. And again, variety is the key here and preparing them properly, which we'll talk about a little later. Pseudo grains such as quinoa, millet, amaranth, buckwheat, wild rice, also brown rice, barley, bulgur, spout, farro, organic corn, oats, oat bran, brown rice pasta, soba noodles, quinoa pasta, and bread. If that's something you're still including and wish to include, then we ask that you just consider homemade or artisan sourdough, pumpernickel, rye, sprouted grain bread, which there's a company, Food for Life, that creates an incredible Ezekiel bread you can give that a try. Now you can see on the outside of the plate that we have fruit and water. So we do not want to forget about these. They are essential as well. So fruits, when we look at fruit, aiming for two or more servings a day, if you eat it on its own, it makes for a really great snack. And again, we encourage a variety when it comes to this. Also, if you can eat in season, that's even better. Different things like berries, grapes, plums, pears, citrus fruits, melons, bananas, apples, peaches, cherries, mango, pineapple. And if you're drinking any fruit juices, avoiding processed fruit juices and encouraging you to have fresh pressed juice if you are gonna have that. And then looking at water, you probably associate the term nutrition with food. However, one item often forgot in most discussions on nutrition is water. The brain is 75% water and without proper hydration, brain function suffers. 
Water is essential for all of the biochemical reactions in the nervous system, and it is vital substrate in the conversion of food to energy in our neurons. You may have noticed that if you're dehydrated, you have trouble concentrating, maybe trouble remembering things. Dehydration can also worsen symptoms of anxiety and lead to panic attacks. When you don't drink enough water, your body releases a stress hormone called cortisol, and this may lead to an increased heart rate, headaches, fatigue, and lightheadedness, all of which can trigger or even worsen the feeling of anxiety. Drinking water has been proven to have a calming effect, probably as a result of preventing all of these symptoms associated with anxiety. So aim for at least two liters of clean, purified water daily. Let's talk about protein. From an early age, we have been misled that we need to consume animal products in order to get the essential protein. So it's not surprising to us that one of the most common questions and concerns when it comes to a plant-based diet is, where do you get your protein? <laughs> Interesting enough, there is such a vast variety of protein-rich foods when it comes to a plant-based diet. Protein sources that are much healthier for us as well as the planet. So what are the sources of protein that we need to eat in order to feel fit, strong, healthy, and satisfied? We'll take a look at the protein sources now. Beans and lentils. We encourage everyone eating these to pre-soak them. This not only provides more nutrients, but it helps with the digestion of them. And we talked about all the different varieties earlier. These are great additions to things like curries, soups, salads, wraps. Really, it's endless. They can be combined in everything and anything. Even brownies can be made with beans. Pseudo grains. Now we are big fans of these because they're not actually a grain, they're considered a seed. They're packed with nutrients and full of essential amino acids. These include things like amaranth, quinoa, buckwheat, millet, and wild rice. Next source of protein, nuts and seeds. Again, something to pre-soak as well to help with the digestion and ensure proper nutrients release. Mushrooms. Again, variety is always good here, and not just with the types, but how you consume them. Mushrooms can be eaten raw as well as cooked, and there's so many different varieties, things like portobello to oyster to shiitake, which many of them are really beneficial for our immune system. Mushrooms are also a great addition to stews and other options if you want to substitute meat because they provide that meaty kind of texture. Fermented beans, including things like miso, tempeh, natto, which is not for everybody. It's basically soybeans and the way that it's fermented, it provides this really stringy, not the best texture, and I'd say it takes a really um, hardcore plant-based eater to consume these, but they're super beneficial. So if you did want to give it a try, I suggest that you do try it. When you're looking for any of these, non-GMO and organic is always best to consider. Vegetables. Yes, you heard it right, absolutely. Vegetables are packed with plant-based proteins. When we think about especially green leafy vegetables, it's becoming more common. We know that kale and spinach, even romaine lettuce or any Swiss chard has a lot of protein in it. Other things like broccoli, Brussels sprouts, bok choy. And then we move on to some of our sea vegetables like wakame, dulse, nori, and even further than that is algaes. So these are often found in powdered form and they're things like spirulina and chlorella. Again, all essential things to start to incorporate into your plant-based diet to ensure that it's sustainable and that it's very healthy and it's gonna allow you to thrive. All right, friends, we hope that this episode of our True Health series has really provided you with a vast amount of information to help you move forward on your path to wholeness. Now, one thing to remember, it's about progress, not perfection. Even if you take one thing I mentioned today and move forward with that, that's a huge step. And one last thing, eating a nourishing whole food plant-based diet is just one of the essential parts of living a healthy lifestyle. We have to also consider moving our bodies, need to consider if we're getting enough sleep, if we're getting out in nature and connecting with nature. I mean, after all, we are part of nature. And we also have to look at our environment, our lifestyle choices. How are we eliminating stress from day-to-day -day life? If you found everything that I shared with you today very informative, then I encourage you to stay tuned because in your inbox, there's gonna be a video from Susanna in just a few days and she's gonna share 
many other things with you that will help you. I really do appreciate your time and staying till the end. After all, look at it as you are investing this time into your health and the well-being of the planet, which is incredible. It's an honor for me to share all of this information because I just know how powerful it can be, especially when it's applied. Again, I'm very grateful. Thank you very much. And we'll see you soon.